So uh, fight, flight, or freeze. Yeah, so like in polyvagal theory, they say like the fight or flight mechanism is kind of separate from freeze. Like they see freeze as a more primitive, um, less adaptable thing. Like, you know, if you think, how does freeze help you? Right. Okay. But think about it. Let's say you're working on the roof and you, you lose your footing. You get like an immediate life or death trigger. Right. Well, fight or flight ain't going to help you. What do you do? Yeah. You freeze. You freeze. Okay. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And uh, think of like a possum. Playing possum. Playing possum. Yeah. Uh, think of... Um, they have snakes, basically, basically they have snakes the, that do it too. Yeah, yeah. hog nose snake. Yeah. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of animals do it. I, there's a, like a YouTube video I saw. It's like a golden retriever like playing with a mallard. And the mallard's just like... And then the dog's like, wait, well, I thought we were chasing. You know, it wasn't trying to kill us. It wanted right. to play. And it's like, eh, oh well. And then it leaves it alone. And then you see the duck go... Yeah, take <laughs> off. Like Hall's butt with the dog. So there's something adaptive, and then uh, it's kind of coming out of thinking about trauma and trauma therapies and all this stuff. But uh, because, you know, your fight or flight response, like the part of the brain that causes that, the amygdala, um, it's the autonomic nervous system or the sympathetic nervous system. That's what triggers that's, fight. That's like fight or flight. Okay. You know? But I, I throw a freeze in there because I think all three of them, it's mathematical. I like three-thirds ideas and stuff like that. But uh, the way I, I started thinking about this one time, it's like we only talk about those mechanisms in life or death situations, like literal emergencies. Like, oh, my God, listen to the uh, your dog attack Episode. Oh yeah, yeah. That destroyed. That was triggering. Like I could feel all that in my body. You know, I don't. I don't really have panic attacks or you know, but I can get myself worked up about things, uh, worrying about stuff at night or if I'm in a lot of pain or something. But, but I could feel that. You know, listen to that. So, um, but we only talk about that response in the context of like those kind of emergencies. But if I'm a real existential guy. Like, we're all here just trying to figure out our life story. And so if somebody, um, <coughs> like, if you told that homelessness story and, you know, it had a happy ending, but if somebody's like, no, Johnny, I still think you're a dick or something, then that that's not the idea of who you you have it yourself that's not your story and so it feels like a personal attack and then but it's a symbolic attack on your sense of identity and that happens to us all day and so what are you saying that you have the fight or flight instinct in that same moment also i think at a much lower level okay and um and i think when we think okay. of fight flight or freeze too literally i think of it symbolically like um and this all came out of me talking about walking. So I started thinking about this, like, you know, when I um, would get in arguments with my ex or like if uh, in any way where, you know, when you're a kid and you're every kid is going to get accused of doing something they didn't do. Right. And it's like triggers you. and Yeah, because uh, I remember I remember that feeling. Yeah. And I can think of that feeling as an adult when somebody says, you know. You did this. Oh, no, I didn't. Wait a minute. Take a deep breath. And so I think. And that uh, is fight or flight. Yeah. And I started yeah. thinking that. Uh, but we're all different because some of us. In those situations, we want to like argue back or like, oh, oh, yeah. You know, and then some of us uh, avoid confrontation and then some people just shut down. Yeah. And so I started, and I, you say that and I can see that in all three of my kids. Every yeah, yeah. one of them does one of those options like and and so i started thinking because it's the automatic sympathetic nervous system is fast and then i think we have reactions um and now it's like we're thinking of fighting too literally and and flight too literally right it's like what are all the ways people fight arguing yeah you know um 
I started thinking well, about Well, then there's like, the posturing side of fighting yeah, posturing. where you, you swell. What'd yeah. you say I did, mother? Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they overlap too. Yeah. But I think if you really, really think about your tendencies, and it's probably part of temperament your whole life, like where your sense of who you are uh, feels under attack in any way. And a lot of times Gosh. it's interpersonal, you know, inter- I used to say interpersonal daggers will make you stagger. You know, they hurt. Yeah. And, uh, and so <laughs> I'm like, I like that. I kind of want to get out of here. You know, I'm like flight, I think yeah. is what I try to do first, you know, but if I can't get away, then I'll fight and then last freeze, you know? And so I start like, I learned this, like if I'm really worried about something, getting like emotionally worked up, like where things feel real heavy. If I just go for a walk, it's like everything falls into place. Yeah. And, um, and so it's kind of like, it's kind of complicated, but I, the theory is that we all have a hierarchy and those things happen in an order for us. And so there'd be six different hierarchies. And so there's freeze first people, flight first people, and fight first people. I got you. And then after, if that one doesn't work, you go to the secondary option. And then that third option is probably really underdeveloped. And so and that the theory was maybe if you work on developing that last one, it'll make you more balanced. And because and, if a bear is chasing you, you want to have all the options. So are there techniques that you can, like, if I wanted to work on, because you say that you try to work on, you know, all of the options. How do you yeah. work on some? Is it like I guess first step is realizing what the options are, right? And then yeah, does that yeah. mean like the next time my kid jump scares me, I fucking punch him in the no. face, <laughs> you know? And, and I'm and I'm taking it literally there, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, but right, right. like, how do you? How do you? How is there an exercise that you can work on something like that? Well, and that that's right. Like, so if it's a theory, what's the utility of a theory? You know, it's like how do you? operationalize something put it in action test right. it whatever and um, and just thinking okay if I'm flight first then find healthier versions of that so like symbolically an unhealthy version of flight would be get pissed drunk if I'm upset that's an escape ah, it's, it's flight okay okay and I've, I've always actually had a personal rule that you know if I'm going to drink it's going to be to celebrate. Yeah, you just unlocked. Some dance to remember, some dance yeah, to forget. The, you just unlocked the, the, person, the, yeah. the, the, don't take it literally. You yes. just unlocked that door for me. I see what yeah, you're saying. So, uh, okay. Like my freeze was underdeveloped and one of the most healthy things I've done for myself in uh, recent years, I started um, going to float tank locations and yeah. that's just like boom. I meditation love, love float tanks and, you know yeah i was when i found out they had one in bozier i was there that saturday but says my wallet in here they closed the one in bozier i know now yeah. now, now i'm going to one in shreveport yeah i was cool. i got a coupon for i gotta go do one um i tried I to say that a couple to weeks next ago saturday but i'm going out of town so i can have to read but yeah I was, i've been trying to get it set up so you're the, a floater yeah fucking love them well hell yeah yeah see synchronicity that old yeah. buskin thing yeah yeah because <laughs> uh i've I felt like that was my religion for a little while because I, I took a lot of friends there. It's like you got to try this. It's not for everybody. And uh, I really enjoyed it. But I was like, if you can get, if you can make yourself do it three times, by the end of the third time, you'll know whether it's for you. Yeah. You know. But man, I because I read about John Lilly, the guy who invented them, when I was in college. One day I was supposed to be working on a paper and procrastinate add myself over to the shelves you were like, you were flighting Zombie. again yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. like, i was like oh this guy this is really fascinating it's like i think i could do that but um so the when i found out because it came back my awareness and then i was at the time my boss who was a psychologist like dude we need to get one of these this would be great for anxiety and all this stuff and he's like yeah yeah but um then it just kind of phased away but then i was talking to somebody and so like oh crap there's one in bozier what because last time i checked it was like lafayette or dallas and so i was there and um i was going through some rheumatic arthritis kind of stuff at the time i was diagnosed with palindromic rheumatism which is right. some old timey precursor to ra and i'm like i'm screw that i refuse to have rheumatoid arthritis. right right <laughs> and uh and so i started just trying to do everything I could 
you know, I'll drink more kombucha or, you know, because somebody told me that. But the float tank helped me more than anything else I did. And oh, it, man. Because when I was like, it can go in remission, I'm like, well, that's my goal. And it's still there. I still have flare-ups of stuff. and But it's that float tank. I can get in there and zone in. And, like, I meditated on, uh, like, the very first time I went because it's very body-focused. Like, this is for this ailment. Right. And um, I kind of had, you know, because you're in there in full dark. And I went full dark, silent, right out. Did right you out the clothed gate. or unclothed? Oh, I'm always naked. That's how, yeah. Because yeah. they're yeah, like, you, you can wear your shorts. Yeah, and I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. You Fuck you. you. I think in Shreveport, I think you have to stay clothed. No. No, I was told. No, somebody they, told me that you did. No, so I'm a, glad you they clarified have a shower. that. shower. It's like you have to shower before you get But it's out. a different style, though. It's not the egg, right? No, no, no. It's an open room. Open room. Because the one it's in Bossier was an egg. Yeah, I do stretches in there. So you can stretch. I can stretch a lot better in the Shreveport. But I do kind of miss... And I was just really loyal t- to that place. Yeah. And I, I wish he could have kept. I would like take people, and if I would mention it to a client or something, I'd hand, I was like, I get no other value out of this other than the place stays open. Yeah. And I can keep going. Yeah. And, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do an episode in the float tank. It's just going to be <laughs> darkness, no sound. But it, I'll tell you, I yeah. like, I visualized, you, there's this old movie, Fantastic Voyage, where they like, shrunk like a spaceship and went in this dude's bloodstream is in the 60s. Yes, uh, uh, Steve Martin and... Uh, no, that's... Uh, you're thinking of Inner Space. Is that the one where he's in the Mart- little... Martin, Martin Short. Martin Short, Martin yeah. Short. that's right. And uh, I can't remember the other guy that... Danny Glover was in that But it, Martin Short was the one that he was in, right? And was there was it? another guy that no, was the was pilot. Was somebody else. Well, there was another guy that was a or pilot. Was Martin Short? Martin Short, I think, I was the... way too long since I've seen that movie. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. I can see him. Have you ever seen 2012? Yes. Uh, the, whoever the main character in that is. Um, John Cusack? No. No, that's not 2012. I'm sorry. Day After Tomorrow. Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, yeah. Hey, we have a computer here. But I, I visualized myself doing that. Like getting into your bloodstream? Like I, I, no like, shit. I pictured in my imagination, like stopping at my joints and like seeing like little cartoonish white blood cells and going, hey, man. That's us. <laughs> Stop attacking, please. Stop attacking. Autoimmunity. Autoimmunity sucks. Dennis Quaid. That's what yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah. to think Dennis of. Dennis Quaid. Quaid. He was the yeah. pilot of that little ship that they got inside of him. That was the movie I was thinking yeah, of. Yeah, Interspace. But they, yeah. Did a, they did another one in the 60s. It was um, the guy from Psycho, Anthony Perkins. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Raquel Welch was in that okay. one. Okay. But uh, so, yes. Yeah, yeah, floating's amazing. Uh I recommend it to anybody. Try at least once. Yeah. I'll try anything once, pretty much. And, Except uh, for asparagus. I'm not doing that. I, I'm kidding. Asparagus, yeah. I hate it. Ugh. The only food I probably won't eat is head cheese just because the texture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, a, I'm a picky eater. Gelatinous yeah, meats are not Big time thing. picky eater. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not mad at you. Now, I will say that I had uh, blood, uh, bone marrow once. Okay. Well, the best shit I've ever eaten in my life. It's, it's probably all in how it's prepared. You know? Period. Okay. Yeah, best shit I've ever eaten in my life. Is that we like were at a, a charcuterie. No, we were actually place? at a steak, a very, very expensive steakhouse oh, in New okay. York. Oh, well, yeah, then they were. And uh, it was, uh, they yeah, it was it, my steak, and it came with bone marrow. That was that was the not I can't say side, but you know how you know how some of those very very fancy restaurants are. You gotta just order everything you want. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you want a steak? All right, here's your steak. You want fries? All right, here's your fries. Oh yeah, you want everything's side, separate. You know, everything's everything's separate. separate yeah. Um, and it was like a hundred and five dollar steak, but it came with bone marrow, and I was Very putting nice. it on bread, on French fries, on steak, on my finger. You're like, can I get and a jar? Of this I was like, over? I need. Because have you ever had a steak, a bite of steak that, like, when you bite it, it's got, it's got a little bit of meat, but it's got that that fat that is just rendered the right, and when and you it bite melts. it, it just melts. Yeah, and yeah, just, yeah. It's oh, yeah. a. Line. That's, like what, it's, a, that's it's what a that. real ribeye is supposed yeah. to be. Like people who don't like ribeyes because the fat is like, but the real yeah. ribeye, yeah. it just melts. Mm. It just melts. And that's what this is. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, you, and you can make everything taste like it. Like you uh, want, you want French fry to taste that good? Here you go. Dip it in. You know, put some bone marrow on it. Yeah. <sighs> I was so like, now I'm hungry. I was no. so on the fence about it too. Whenever I first tried it, I was like, ah. <laughs> well, it's, but it's, it it's so melty. Good. Like I, I think of. 
gelatinous. Yeah, it was like, gelatinous like that. Yeah, but it melty gelatinous instead of like chewy gelatinous. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah it was definitely know. melty. Yeah, it definitely wasn't. Yeah, oh, you know that, that's pretty. That's pretty good there, boy. <laughs> I thought pretty good, like eating a steak from uh, Chili's. Did you hear Applebee's closed? No, did they? Yeah, wow. well, ours did at least. What it, What's really funny is uh, my girlfriend and I were gonna go. We're just thinking of where to eat. It's like let's go to El Patria. This is like I don't know, not even that long. Oh ago. yeah, and they tore the building down. Um, it's completely gone. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how long ago it had been since I've been to this place. And, uh, he moved to Bozier for the record. Yeah, I just like. Okay, well, it's not. It doesn't exist anymore. Sh- Shreveport's weird since I because I moved away for a while and moved back, and I just get in a routine. There's just parts of town I don't frequent, and then I'll yeah. something will be there. I'm like, what? What's happened? Where did where that mi- Dunkin' Donuts come from? Yeah, something? if you don't mind me asking, where'd you move to? Uh, I lived in Plano, Texas, for three years, and uh, Cary, North Carolina, which is outside of Raleigh, for four years. Uh, just kind of wanted to get out of Shreveport. Yeah. And uh, came back. Ended up coming back. Yeah. I've always told myself if I get out of here, I'm not coming back, but I ain't left yet. I don't look was, like it's going to happen. I was married either. at the time, and the reason we decided to move back, or probably my main reason, was my kids were really young. Yeah. Like they were, they're young adults now, but they, I think, started kindergarten and second grade the year we moved back here. Gotcha. And, you know, they got great grandparents and stuff, but it's like, and they love them, but the, they're Shreveport people. They're not going to go up to North Carolina all the time. They're right. not going to do it. It's like, we'll see them once every 18 months or something, yeah. you know. And every other Christmas. Yeah, and then um, they have lots of cousins, and I just didn't, you know, they're good people, and it's probably a, a good idea because, you know, a lot of, um, like, grandparents or family members are probably better influence on them yeah. than I am. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> there you go. It, takes, it takes a village. It takes, it takes a, a village. village but it's, so it's mainly to... And I don't regret that part of it because they have a lot of good memories and a lot of people don't have that. Yeah, no, I'm just, I was born and raised here and I've let, I've let myself be talked out of every opportunity that I've had to get out of here. Yeah. You know, and I mean, look, I'm grateful because I've got the three little ones that I got now and I wouldn't change my, I wouldn't change what I've got for for nobody. What I'm doing. Yeah. And, but man. Uh, I've been like, oh, I've been here my whole life, man. This place is not necessarily the uh, the bee's knees, as some people would say. Uh, this this town's got it's got some problems. Yeah, you gotta you just gotta carve it out, I guess. You gotta carve out the your spot, the, your spot, your your thing, your people, your activities, and you know there there are places that are pretty. You know, I was able to go fishing out on Bisno with an old childhood friend. Yeah, did um. They got water in Bistano right now. It looked great. It no looked like old out there? It looked like nice. Bistano from my childhood, it, and we nice. caught some hybrid striper. Saw two bald eagles. It was pretty badass. I thought so. you were about to say bodies. When no, you no, no, no. Saw no two bodies. 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 No big deal. Just two big. Sounds old. like Lake Bistano of old to me. <laughs> <laughs> over there by Green Park. Yeah. So. What is that over there up against the dam? Oh, that's a spillway body. Yeah. 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 A buddy of mine used to have his grandparents had a, a little house. Off of uh, one fifty seven, yeah, is that east and west? Something like that. yeah, one fifty seven north and south, but one fifty one fifty four. Yeah, I had a gas plant a, road gas specifically. Plant. I think that was. Yeah, I'm not gonna look it up. I was in. Yeah. We were in Doyleen. We had a fishing camp that um, it was really it was a really great place, but it started flooding. Yeah, and after it flooded, that area just went. Psh- kind of went downhill that sucks yeah. my dad sold it for uh, like nothing i uh we didn't have that when we were growing up but i had a friend excuse me i had a friend whose mom had a little lake cabin on uh what is one of those marinas that's out there on business there's a uh, joy camp Great. joy that's yeah. it yeah, yeah. and uh, we used to go out there oh man she used to drop us off and we could ride our bikes the last like two miles mm-hmm. in there um Nobody ever messed with us. Yeah, man. You know, we would, you know, we would get there and we would ramp our bikes immediately off the dock into the water. Oh, nice. And, you know, to cool off. And then you yeah. just drag your bike back up and out. And then, you know, you're there chilling. And they had a boat and we, you know, got on the lake. And yeah. we had a lot of fun. I had yeah. a lot of fun doing that. This knows, yeah, when it, I think it was after I moved away and the first time with my same friend to his parents' place, went out after the Salvinia and 
it'd been a while since I've yeah. seen, but I was like, what is happening with all this shit in the water? It was, it was depressing. Did you see all their idea, like some of the ideas that they had about how to like manage that and deal with it? No, somebody told me one time is uh, like, if they could figure out any way, like you could like make a dollar, you know, off of this stuff per pound is like, all the rednecks in, in yeah. Louisiana would be well, out there I'd, collecting it. I had an idea of how to do it, and I was told I was a moron. And then somebody got like a, if I remember correctly, somebody got like a, a grant or something to try to do it. But this motherfucker had a, basically his idea was a riding lawnmower on pontoons, and you just chop it all up, and it goes down the dam. And my problem. And then where does it go? Yeah, well, my problem is, is that they say that when you, the problem is, is that, what you see on this it's like an iceberg what you see on the surface is like right yeah, 10 percent yeah. of what's going on yeah because it blows around <laughs> and know. it's all tangled like apparently yeah. it's long like it's their families of arms it's like mycelium yeah on the so water or something. what my thought was is you do it like a you you basically get you a you know a party barge of some sort mm-hmm. a, a boat and something that you can like a dumpster you know on barges and you do like a lift station for um uh, sewage where okay, you use yeah. a corkscrew you yeah put yeah. that corkscrew down in the water and the corkscrew just grabs it and just starts pulling it in and it dumps it into the thing they and have some kind of boats that do guarantee stuff different things like that guarantee like on the coast with seaweed yeah I think, so. and, I, I, and it's not like this is an original idea i know that there's no yeah. way and the guy that i was talking to he worked for whatever that there's i used to deliver water out there and that's how and i was like man just uh, get you guys you know and he was like you're a fucking idiot that would never work i was like all right i'm just gonna go back to delivering my water fuck me you know what i mean (laughs) but yeah hey uh, there's so many people who tell you you can't do something yeah and then well i didn't live on the lake my property value wasn't you know messed with so fuck you guys i don't care important to you i know yeah no but it was like hey man this would work like that would absolutely work i've had lifelong stupid ideas people told me all my life oh yeah it's like i'm just like 30 years ahead of my time (laughs) i just ain't got no money (laughs) yeah i I need i need an injection molding company to do a couple of things that i want to do yeah yeah ideas are fun oh yeah it's just that whole uh execution execution that's right thing yeah. but yeah yeah absolutely th- i think um <laughs> the it, understatement of the year i think at caddo uh like texas parks system uh they have like this project where they're using these weevils to maybe eat it i think that might be for salvinia maybe um there's a something there that they're doing i know they drain lake bisono i mean when i d- delivered water I mean, I bet they drained it four times trying to get rid of all that shit. Yeah, the trees out, the tree line from my friend's uh, parents' place, the dock that, you know, we always would go fish off of. Beautiful cypress tree line just, like, across the water. It's all dead because yeah. of fire. Oh, the wow. The uh, one like, low or whatever. Some fire came through. And oh, wow. It's, like, really weird because been a long time it was like just dead trees that's crazy it's the same trees they were just all just just burn up those bleached out cypress oh that's crazy that or what do you call them stops down I don't know. yeah i remember like driving out across that you know they've got that long bridge that's right there by the uh, the spillway and you don't see any water yeah. none there's no water like, where is all the water? This is Lake Biston. Where's the damn lake? And you go back there and talk to those people. And, you know, some of those people have been living back there for, you know, a couple of generations of family, yeah. like, own this property. And they're like, man, I've been eating off my back porch for decades, and now I can't eat no more. I got to go to the damn grocery store. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, damn, yeah. you don't even think about stuff like that. Yeah, catching your own fish. Or people that, you know, bought a house, you know, and, you know, now they can't sell it. Because it's supposed to have waterfront property. Right, right. You know what I mean? And that water's 500 yards that way. Good luck walking to it. It's all muddy mess in there, too, by the way. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, so sorry about your luck. The water will come back, and hopefully it'll stop and not keep coming. Maybe one day, yeah. One time on uh, Toledo Bend. Oh, my God. When it, It was one of those summers a long time ago. There was, like, a bad drought, and so this, it's a... what do you call that place? Right there at Highway 6. Little uh, Cypress Inn or something like that. But they have like an inlet with a boat house and everything. And 
this one year because I would go down there with some guys every year, but it was completely dry. It's like, wow. Okay, and now I can see why we were catching bass right there because there's like a, a, yeah. a drop-off. Well, that makes you sense. You now see the topographical? Yeah, but then <laughs> there's a guy who had a property across the little bay inlet thing with a earth mover, uh, like a bulldozer or something. Right. And he, he was like moving dirt and extending his yard out into the lake. Oh, and no so shit. When the water came out, yeah. like, I just added like a... Well, I don't know, a sixteenth of an acre to my, my front yard or something. Yeah. I was like, hey. That's a thousand dollars right there, boy. I know. It's like that's that's probably I don't know. It's yeah, it's yeah, weird. No, this this city, uh, we could that could be a whole nother episode. Oh yeah, we itself. don't need to we we yeah. gotta love Shreveport though. I do. Uh, I do. I used to say when I was in North Carolina and I would run because I, I would run into people randomly, it's like, oh, that had a connection. I'd be like, Shreveport's a great place to be from. You know, <laughs> So that's say. funny. Yeah, it's a and great then, place to leave. Okay, that's a great place to be. Where, do you mind me asking where you went to high school? Captain Shreve. Captain Shreve. Yeah, that's that's he, right. He was, we talked about that. Yeah, he I'm supposed to hate you. I went uh, to Bird. Uh, yeah. So well, I guess we'll right. just delete all this stuff. Yeah. That's been this week's episode, and then we had Shreve guy in here. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The rivalry here in town. My kids to went something. to Birds. So. Yeah. 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 Well, my, my really son. Care. My son will be. No, I don't either. I'm just talking <laughs> shit. Uh, back when I was in high school, we gave a damn, you know. My junior year in high school, I had a whole bunch of team spirit. Like, I remember oh, yeah. we painted our face before the game once. And, I was uh, in the band, baby. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. 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 And then, yeah. Old Bird class of 1999. Oh, yeah. C.E. Bird High School. L.C.O.T.C., I think, the last class of the century. Yeah, L.C.O.T.C. Okay. City of Bird. Yeah, the city That's of Bird. Way too many kids. With that way too many. Way too many. <laughs> way too many. Man, I've seen all sorts of shit. I've seen... You know, from acts of kindness to acts of violence to, oh, yeah. you know, drug deals to... Everybody you know, who everything. was a bird. Actually, sure, you do had a, that's lots of good stories. Oh, yeah. I've got some friends. I, I, I have some friends that went to Shreve, and it, it was just a smaller version of bird. Yeah. It was, yeah but I, I always tell people when you have old friends, you know, hang on to them. Because when you have a lot of history with, with somebody, it's like... It's just kind of fun to get together and well, remember that's what, that time. Yeah, and, blah, blah, blah. and that's what the that's what the joy of the twelfth of April when uh, my my buddy uh, his name's Ashton Poole, yeah. Bozier Fireman, Firefighter of the Year a couple nice, years ago. Nice. He puts on Battle of the Badges, uh, that fight that the the cops and the the firefighters Is it like a boxing, do. Yeah, jujitsu, the boxing, I believe. See, I, that's yeah, healthy fight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bring it back around. Yeah. Uh, but he's coming on and he's like. He that's he, that's cop, how that episode will be is cops and uh, firefighters need yeah need some release some healthy oh, release yeah, but no he'll be he'll be one of those nostalgic episodes where cool. you know where because I mean me and him are old friends we hadn't seen each other in a while and I am I am so excited about just sitting down and chewing the fat with him for a little while you know especially like, I'm super proud of the guy and like I said firefighter of the year Hard. yeah and you know they're. Like I mean, shit don't stink to him. He's Teflon Don. I love it. Well, man, again, uh, I appreciate you coming, and thanks Absolutely. for hanging out with me. And we'll do it again. And uh, you guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, comment. You know, if you want to come on, email me his man cave productions at gmail dot com, and uh, we'll sit down and do this exact same thing here.